Do you ever make, say, a lot of really intricate plans with um, a specific timeline in mind? And then when it's now time to work on said plan, immediately want to do anything and everything but that plan? No, me neither. Okay, vlogging. <laughs> um, I keep forgetting I need to actually, you know, talk to the camera. I am warm. I was doing some yard work outside, even though it's, well, probably because it's in the 70s and just gorgeous. I wasn't intending to do yard work. This is not the outfit I would have worn had I planned on doing yard work today, but I was out enjoying the sunshine with my son and I started pruning my hydrangea because it's budding and it's time to prune it. And I got a little carried away, started attempting to intentionally recreate the accidental success of, um, what's the word? Oh, what's the word? Germinate? That's not it. It's, um, propagate. Propagate. The accidental success of propagating hydrangea last year, which just happened when my daughter stuck one of the pruned branches in a pot of soil, and it grew, and it bloomed, so I'm trying again with more because, oh man, that hydrangea is a monster. I have pruned it back more and more each year that we've lived in this house. Today I went probably extreme, but it grows like mad. And since it is such hardy stock and I was able to, you know, get a baby hydrangea from it without even trying last year, I'm trying to do it on purpose this time. So I... <laughs> I had a bunch of empty flower pots and a bunch of branches of hydrangeas with buds, so I stuck them in pots with some potting soil that I just had lying around, and we'll see how they do. Not that I need more hydrangeas, but I do love them. Anyway, um, I'm awfully chatty today. This is what happens when you let me vlog, uh, so get used to that. If I do more of these videos, we'll see. Now, of course, because it's so warm today, especially, I don't really want to work on the red wool dress that I've been meaning to work on for the last two months and have not actually started. And I'm leaning towards working on one of the rayon summer dresses instead. <sighs> this is the problem with my brain. I have to chase the dopamine. On the other hand, I do kind of really want to work on the plaid vest, partly because my birthday is coming up, and since I made the first plaid vest for my son's birthday, it would be kind of cool to make this one for my birthday, and then, you know, wear them together. So I might do this one next. So I just need to point out that I've been really good so far. I've been working on the 24 pieces that I planned at the beginning of the year, well, 23, because, you know, this blouse is going to take up all of my cream rayon, so I only have enough cream rayon for one blouse. And I am going to make an extra collar, possibly two, from the remaining cream rayon that wasn't enough for a second blouse. But I did still want to make another blouse, and I have figured out the fabric I want to use, and it is this pink silk leftover scrap of a sari. I already used the bulk of the sari to make this 1790s-ish open robe. This is the back. And I have about two yards left not including the border, which I did cut off of 
one end so it's not the full width of the original sari it's let's see probably about 40 inches wide but it is two yards 40 inches wide that should be enough to get another blouse out of and I really love this pink color I don't know how much it's going to go with anything else in this 1940s wardrobe but it will go really well with this gorgeous butterfly rayon print that I got several years ago and one half of the width is this gorgeous giant butterfly print. Here's my hand for scale. And then the other half of the width is this lovely floral print in the same colors as the flowers on the other side. And I decided a couple of years ago that I wanted to make a capsule wardrobe based on this fabric with a skirt made out of the butterfly part and a blouse or two, if I could get two, out of the floral print. And I decided that after having the fabric in my possession for a few years and not being able to decide how I wanted to make the dress I originally planned to make from it, so I always knew I wanted the butterfly portion to be the skirt and the floral part to be the top but I couldn't decide if I wanted it like a shirt dress with buttons down the front and long sleeves or like a peasant top with short sleeves and gathered neckline anyway um, so I finally decided to do the whole capsule wardrobe thing because then I would be able to make multiple looks instead of just one dress and I pulled a bunch of other fabrics and pieces from my wardrobe and then bought a bunch of cardigan sweaters to coordinate with the pink, blue, and green in the floral print. And I'm just now realizing that this pink silk is pretty much a perfect match for the pink. Not exact, but pretty darn close. And now I want to work on this capsule wardrobe instead of my 1940s vintage plans. <sighs> Not only that, but I am also now contemplating remaking my yellow wrap dress, which I love, out of this pink floral print. It's a similar lightweight cotton voile. And I also have this solid pink, pretty close match, that I was toying with lining this dress out of. But now I'm thinking, if I'm going to do a capsule wardrobe, I should have one of those basic slip dresses that I can wear under a lot of things, either as its own top, as its own skirt, as a dress, like with a jacket on it or whatever, that you often see in capsule wardrobes. So now I want to make this very light, almost gauzy, like look how sheer that is, pink fabric into a slip dress, probably at least partially lined, and then make the wrap dress that I could wear over the slip dress, and then I could also wear the slip dress with the butterfly skirt. So now I want to work on all of those things none of which are on my schedule for the year so you know but I am gonna pump the brakes a little bit because this fabric is irreplaceable it is silk it is very special to me and obviously I have limited remaining yardage so I am not going to make a blouse out of this until I know for sure exactly what pattern I want to use and that that pattern fits me and looks good and does the thing I want it to do and so far I don't know what pattern I want to use. So I think I'm going to make every other blouse <laughs> conceivable before I start on that pink silk one just so that I know for sure it's what I want to make. However, 
<laughs> this does mean that I might throw this floral blouse in ahead of it because I do know what pattern I want to use for the floral blouse. It's not a 1940s pattern. It is in fact a mashup of two modern patterns, but I think they might give a vintage vibe anyway. So I have this pattern that I have used once before. I actually took one of my husband's old button-down shirts that he was no longer wearing and cut it up and made a blouse for myself out of it so I didn't have to do the buttons and buttonholes. They were already there. It was very convenient. I guess I made view A but without the ruffle down the front. That ruffle is darn cute though. But I do want long sleeves, I have decided for sure. I want long sleeves on this blouse and obviously this pattern doesn't have long sleeves. So I'm going to use the sleeves from this pattern. So basically I'm really itching to start on this capsule wardrobe, which has nothing to do with the rest of my wardrobe. But also, I'm realizing that I've been wearing my navy blue wool skirt a lot, and before that I was wearing the brown polyester skirt that I based it on also a lot. And I am finding that there's a gap in my wardrobe in that I don't have just a plain black skirt. That would open up some more wardrobe options for me. I have a lot of tops that would coordinate with black more than they would go with brown or navy that I'm just kind of not wearing right now because I have nothing to pair them with. And part of the capsule wardrobe that I planned two years ago based on this black butterfly fabric was a black A-line skirt with ribbons sewn in vertical lines based on this Instagram reel that I saw a while back. This skirt caught my attention in a major way and has just been lodged in my brain ever since. It's 3.15? I gotta go. Okay, I'm back. I had to pick up my daughter from the bus stop and get her and her brother a snack and do homework, cook dinner, eat dinner. Now it's three hours later. This is my life. <laughs> I get little moments to sew here and there. It's going to get better. Eventually my son will start kindergarten and then I'll have all school day to work on things. <sighs> And then my battery died, so if I'm a little all over the place, that's why. So back to the idea of this skirt that had so bewitched me. I think the thing that I was really drawn to was the idea of creating my own pattern on already existing fabric using ribbon just sewn in straight vertical lines. So super simple to do and I have a lot of ribbon. No, hold on. I have a lot of ribbon. This isn't even all of it. This is just what is still on spools. I have more containers of just loose ribbon. But anyway, I should definitely be able to find the colors that I need for creating this skirt from my existing ribbon, so that's something I won't have to shop for, which is nice. And I do have some black bottom weight cotton that I can make a skirt out of very easily. And I mean, I should not be working on this capsule wardrobe right now, that's not what I need in this current moment. But I did have the thought, what if I made this black cotton skirt A-line? with the ribbons applique on in straight vertical lines on one side, but what if I made it reversible and the other side was just plain black with black, you know, stitching lines of the ribbon from the other side of the fabric. So it would be a very subtle visual interest, but 
just a plain black skirt that I could wear with other items in my current wardrobe and probably other things that I could pair it with in my 1940s vintage wardrobe that I'm working on. So that's what I want to work on right now. Uh. And I said, I just said that I wanted to finish the plaid vest, which I haven't even started, for my birthday, which is on Friday. Today is Monday, so... If it were just a straightforward matter of cutting out the fabric and sewing it together, I'm sure I could do that. However, I still need to alter the pattern to fit me because it is a smaller size than I currently am. I've tried on the mock-up that I made years ago, which fit at the time, no longer fits. We grow, we change, it's fine. And I have plans to alter this pattern, but I have very little of this plaid fabric and it's very precious to me. And I don't want to waste it on a garment that doesn't fit. <clears throat> so I should really make another mock-up after I've made the pattern changes before I cut out the actual vest. So, with Monday nearly over, do I really have time to make all of that before Friday? Pattern changes, a new mock-up, potentially more pattern changes, and then the actual garment. Possibly not. And that's not what my brain wants to do right now. My brain wants to sew ribbon onto black fabric and cut it into A-line skirt panels and sew it together and figure out how to make a reversible skirt with pockets because that's not a simple feat I can't imagine <clears throat> yeah so that's where I'm at <clears throat> it's a good time alright I should turn off the camera and do something I don't know what but we'll find out Okay, I'm officially starting on the plaid vest. I first need to alter the pattern, but I realized that I will not be wasting time by making a mock-up because I can use that mock-up as the lining, if it fits, without major alterations. And um, I'm just gonna go for it. So, first things first, altering the pattern. I will talk about this more when I make a video specifically about this vest, but basically I had tried on the mock-up that I made four years ago and found that I needed about an inch extra on both front pieces. I accomplished this by first tracing the center front with the facing, then moving the whole pattern piece over one inch over from the edge and finished tracing the other side. I also ended up adding half an inch to the center back of the back piece, giving me an additional extra inch in the back. Okay, if I'm lining this, which I am, and it has this big facing here, it's like four inch wide facing, four and a half, I don't need the lining to cover the entire inside. I just need it to come, oh, probably to the center. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the lining to this center front fold line and then try it on because I'll still know if it overlaps because it's just the lining. <laughs> it's going to be my mock-up and lining. And I don't have a ton of this black cotton. Okay, it is after midnight and I should really be in bed, but I wanted to try this on and see how it's fitting. I think I'm pretty pleased with the 
overall fit, I think it needs just a bit of tweaking. Um, especially at the shoulders. I forgot that I was adding width to the front shoulder, but not the back shoulder, so I just did this little tuck because I wasn't sure if it would be better to take out the width at the armhole or the neckline. So just for try on purposes, I put a little tuck that's not going to be there in the finished vest, but um, as you can see, I'm trying it on over a long sleeve button down shirt because I wanted to see how it would interact with a collar because that's likely what I'm going to be wearing it with. Not this specific shirt. I wouldn't wear a plaid shirt with a plaid vest. That would be chaos. I have not put the darts in the back yet, but there is still room, I think, to take them in. And I like where it's hitting at the waist. I'm wearing it with one of the skirts that I will be wearing the vest with. And I know it's going to be a bit shorter when I hem or, you know, face it or whatever, but yeah, I think overall this is good. The darts seem to be in the proper places, so I'm happy with that. I think I just need to fix the front shoulder issue, put the darts in the back, and we'll be good to go. Yay! Well, joke was on me. It got cold again. Actually freezing this morning, which of course it did. It's March. Anyway, I've been working on the plaid wool vest, and I'm really liking how it's turning out. But of course now I do actually want to work on the red wool dress. But I know myself, and as soon as I start working on it and it gets warm again, I'm going to want to switch to something more appropriate for warm weather, so maybe it's better if I just leave it until the fall. I don't know. I really need to make those pants that I cut out four years ago. Has it been four years? Oh boy. Almost four years. Anyway, sewing shelf mints. Any minute now. Here we go. When I left off on Saturday, which is the last time that I worked on this, it's now Monday, so only one whole day has gone by. I had basted the welt pocket in place on, well, just the welt. I had basted the welt in place for the lower right pocket and basted the facing onto the pocket itself. And before I go any further, I just need to review the instructions and make sure I am doing it absolutely correct because once it's cut I can't go back. <sighs> vlogging thing is really incentivizing me to actually do my makeup every day. Of course, yesterday I left my hair to dry naturally, so now it's straight. And I'm really not used to seeing it like this anymore, even though I'm not doing the dressing vintage full-time thing yet. That starts January 1st of next year. But I have been easing into it, <laughs> trying to, um, I guess, build my tolerance for putting in effort on a daily basis. I'm a homebody. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I don't usually have anywhere to go, and it can be difficult to motivate myself to put time and effort into looking good, I guess. But I'm really enjoying the way I'm feeling with dressing up most days, so. Basically, I'm enjoying doing the vlog, so I hope you're enjoying watching. I have something to show you.
as if I needed something else to distract me, my mother sent me this beautiful silk dupioni fabric for my birthday. She saw it at a fabric store and immediately thought of me. It's very much my colors, these rich jewel tones and Oh, of course now I'm dreaming about what it wants to be. Either a 1950s cocktail dress or potentially a matching suit, jacket and skirt that I could also mix and match with different things. I don't know. It's it's beautiful. And mm, I'm itching to get started on something. But I'm being good and I'm working on my plaid vest instead. Obviously my birthday has come and gone and I'm still working on this. New goal is to have it finished by the end of March. What's today? The 27th? So I have four days left. Could definitely happen. I've done the darts and I've done one welt pocket. Hooray! It looks so cute! Yes, this is as far as I can get my fingers in. Such a tiny little pocket. And now it is time to do the buttonholes because I am going to do bound buttonholes as the pattern calls for. However, I am not going to make the bound buttonholes from the plaid, even though I have plenty of extra. I really want to do contrast bound buttonholes. And I have, of course, scraps of the navy blue wool from the skirt and I think that would look really nice. I also think this fabric will hold a crease slightly better than this one will and as I learned with my baked potato maternity dress, I guess I'm gonna call it, <laughs> it is very difficult to do bound buttonholes in a springy wool like this one. So I'm gonna do a test Make sure it actually works with the navy blue wool before I potentially ruin my vest front. Doing a test of bound buttonholes the first time around would have been really smart and I wish I had done that. Probably would have saved me a lot of pain and heartache. Anyway, moving on. All right, proof of concept. I need to put the lining in first. Basically, I'm making this more complicated for myself because it's not meant to be lined. It's meant to have bias facings. So, the fact that the side seams do not match up is a feature because you're supposed to use the front facing for this point and then a bias facing just for this little bit. Actually, I think there's a pattern piece for it. It's not biased. Um, and then this part, you're supposed to turn up the edge and then turn up and it meets the facing here so then it gets hemmed all the way around. But I don't need this extra bit because I'm lining it. So that's fine, I can just cut off the excess. But it gets really complicated over here at the facing because I still do want to use the facing. In fact, I need to because my lining just comes exactly to center front, no further. There's no seam allowance there. That was by design on my part, but I can't just turn the facing, oh yeah, duh, because the facing needs to go the other way. Oh, wait, does that work? Facing goes around this way, but, oh no, no, that doesn't work. Yeah, so I can't just do that, maybe I can. Okay, as I'm thinking it through out loud. I can on the left side 
turn the facing in right side to right side as I normally would and then sew the lining over the top and then when this gets turned inside out it should okay so that does work on the side with the buttons <laughs> however it gets more tricky on this side which will have the buttonholes because they're going to be bound buttonholes and I want to sew the opening part of the buttonhole through both layers of the top fabric and the lining so therefore I need to sew the lining on first, leave the facing free, turn it inside out, sew those buttonholes. It's not gonna work though. What if, hear me out, instead of making it more complicated than it needs to be, stay with me, I just flatline, instead of bag line, the whole thing, and still do the facings at the front edge, the neckline, and the arms eyes. That would work, right? I mean, I do want to line it. I very badly want to line it because I don't want to deal with all these raw edges and I don't want the pocket like flapping around in there. I want it contained. But I could just sew the lining to the vest wrong side to wrong side then I can do the bound buttonholes still use the facing as intended and my life would be simpler yeah and then I wouldn't have to do as much like curve clipping and intense pressing of the you know flipped right side out bag lined monstrosity it would be at that point. <laughs> this will be so much easier. I don't know why I didn't think of this. Um, yeah, so. <sighs> I'm gonna take the easy way out and not stress myself out too much. This will be good. This will be good for me. We can do it gonna be okay. Whew. I'm glad that I haven't trimmed off the lower edge yet because I'm now going to use it as the hem as it was intended. Okay, it's gonna be so much easier. <laughs> okay, we're good, we're good. First, of course, I had to unpick the side seams and insert the back ties that I had forgotten to add when I stitched them together in the first place. Good thing I caught this before I added the lining. I may have made these too short. I think they're supposed to overlap more than that. You know, uh, anyway. Um, I do have a couple of vest buckles. I have one that's silver and one that's more gunmetal. Definitely want to use one for this and one for the black vest, but I don't know which one I want for which, so I'm going to go grab the black fabric real quick. See if I like the way one looks better with that. Where's the right side of this fabric? Here we go. Hmm. I think I do like the gunmetal better with the black and the silver with the plaid. Yeah, definitely. All right, cool. Cool. Okay. 
wrong side to wrong side. Flat lining. do when lining a garment that has darts is I will press the darts in one direction on the outer fabric and in the other direction on the lining. So this pattern called for all the darts to be pressed toward the center, which is what I did on the front and back, and then the horizontal dart was to be pressed up. And then I just did the opposite on the lining, pressed those away from center and these down. Um, as you can see, these back darts did not line up exactly perfectly together, and I decided I did not care enough to fix it, so I just left them as is because the width of the darts and the pieces ended up being the same, so I didn't really want to mess with it, but I did still press these darts outward and the actual outer fabric darts inward. Anyway, I have now stitched around my flat lining just um, a quarter inch in from the edge because all of my seam allowances on this pattern are half inch, except down here I stitched really close, only like a an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the lining which I cut off at the fold point. The stitching line is still going to be on the inside, it's not going to show outside. This will just get turned up. Hello wind. I don't know if you can hear that or not but it got very windy. All right, it's dying back down. So that will be the hem. Um, I did just pin the shoulder seams together and try it on and look in the mirror, and it's fitting beautifully. I'm quite happy with the fit. I was a little concerned that adding the lining would give me extra bulk and make it not want to fit as well, but I think there is some ease in this pattern. And... This ended up being actually a little bit loose, so I can tighten that down a smidge. Yeah, but I'll worry about that after I have put the whole thing together. I'm keeping this buckle on for now because it's keeping these ties, you know, ruly. So they're not just flopping around all over the place and getting in the way. I didn't want them getting caught in my stitching, obviously. Okay, so now it's finally time to do the bound buttonholes, and I'm so glad I'm doing this flat lining thing because it's making this so much simpler. Because I can just stitch them on. And I need to find my markings again. They've all kind of worn off a bit. So, get my pattern piece back out. Beautiful. I am not feeling great today, but I am determined to finish this vest so that I can record my monthly recap video tomorrow and say I finished something in the month of March. <sighs> that video will come out before this one, so you will either have already seen it, or if you haven't, I will link it up here. Or you can just watch to the end of this video and find out. 
if I accomplish my goal. But I am feeling pretty good about it. I just have to do the buttonholes and I've already done a test one. I know it works. And then I just have to sew the shoulder seams together and then do all the facings. Pretty simple, right? Not too hard. <sighs> Nothing complicated. All the complicated stuff is already done. I've done the darts, I've done the welt pockets. I guess technically the bound buttonholes is the last complicated thing, but as I said, I've done it before. I'm good. I've tried it on, I know it fits. It's gonna work, it's gonna be good. Just gotta do it, here we go. last one that I did is slightly slanted, just on the top edge. The bottom looks pretty parallel with the stripes, so I'm gonna re-sew that a little bit. Where's my seam ripper? much better. Not bad. Hi. 
one down. Okay, I've come over to my little hand sewing station that I have set up in my sewing room, finally. And there are a couple things I'm going to do here. I left the tails of my thread long. Didn't want to clip them because I didn't want to back stitch over um, this tiny little area. So I am going to take a needle and sew those down just to the back side and then I can tie them with the other ends of the bobbin thread. And then I also want to tack the folds down outside of the actual buttonhole just to keep everything neat and tidy on the inside. And I will be trimming away parts of the excess, but not very much. Finally, finally, the very last step of the bound buttonholes. I hand basted the facing using a bright yellow thread around the box of the buttonhole so that I would be able to see on the other side where to clip to the corners. Precision is key here. And I stopped filming after this, but the next step would be press all of these edges down and whip stitch them on the back side as invisibly as possible. And then I could sew on the buttons to match. You guys. Rachel Maxey was right. I mean, not that there was any doubt, but vests are awesome. Look at this. Look at this! I mean... Yes. Let's see if we can uh, get a full length shot. There we go! Yeah! I mean... Wait a second. Giving dark academia, right? Hobbit librarian, maybe? I'm here for it. I love this vest. I really, really love it. And this this outfit together, I mean, come on. 100%. I'm in love. That's it. I want to make more. Alright, I've got to wrap up this vlog so I can finish editing it and get it out to you. So, I'll see you later. Enjoy!
but I do think I should make, hold on, I lost it, okay, 